I would like to move now to the first uh, use case from this webinar. And I would like to invite Andrea Riccio. Here we are. Welcome to everybody. I'm absolutely glad of being here presenting you our co-creation experiments that, as Hadran already mentioned, took place in one of our resource center, which is like somehow devoted to innovation and like startups. So, but let's start from the beginning. But I cannot change the slide. Okay, which was our challenge when we decided to set up the experiments and that it's the challenge that we keep working on to establish the first RRI-based Sapienza Research Center. So the idea was to have this brand new research center where we uh, try to um, like put into practice a responsible governance in order to foster possible scale up to the entire organization or to other parts of the organization. So some assumptions. The experiment aimed at implementing, as I said, uh, this uh, responsible governance uh, in, a, uh, in an ongoing Sapienza project that was named Sapirenko. Sapirinka, uh, with, with the aim of like strengthening university social impact and value, taking into consideration also the topic of sustainability. What we really um, used as an initial assumption was to consider responsibility as one of governance dimension for the organization management, together with the most, I would say, traditional dimensions such as efficiency, efficacy, and cost effectiveness. So, to sum up, sorry, which were our uh, objective to test in a pilot scale the setting up of a multi-actor co-created responsible governance in a complex environment. So the aim was to try to understand limits and opportunities for a big university to, to implement responsible governance using a pilot case. The other objective was to involve different stakeholders. So we had internal scientists, but also external ones. So like researchers coming from other research organization, but also company. Uh, or company organization, for example, we're working a lot of this with the Italian Association for Industrial And we also worked with policy makers like the regional ones because we tried to um, like implement this structure, this research center, according to the smart specialization strategy of our region. Okay, I was looking for a chat. Can you hear me? Well, then another important objective of the project was to engage families and especially school children, letting them experiencing through hands-on experiments the role of sustainability in their daily life. So we selected uh, in order to um, like to to, de to deploy our like uh, our co-creation experiments. We selected some of the pillars of RRI as they are like stated by the commission, and the pillars were governance, as it was easy to understand, then science education and public engagement. As a result, we will see that our experiment could be somehow divided into two main blocks. The first one aimed really at the implementation of our like governance and governance guidelines for responsible, uh, for responsible research and innovation in RFPOs. And the other one aimed at uh, creating hands-on activities to foster science education and public engagement uh, for especially families uh, on the teams of sustainability. So as far as it concerns the governance perspective, which is like the first block that we will talk about, we can say that there was a first phase started in September 2018 in which we tried to uh, involve internal and external stakeholders uh, in a co-design phase uh, to, to state which were, according to them, uh, the core relevance for our RRI-based research center using the theory of change. So as a methodology, we choose the theory of change developed by Carol Weiss in the 90s. And we tried, so in this way, to define which were our inputs. So what we had, just to make you an example, we had like some funding from the European Commission. We also have like a physical space, which was Saperi and Co. We have people willing to do that. 
then which could be our activities. So the real things that we could do and which could be and which would have been our outputs, outcomes and impact. When we talk about outputs, we talk about like the immediate results of your activities. So you can measure them in the short time. Then we will talk about outcomes. We intended to measure like the medium period, so the medium time. And so something that it derives from the activities, but it's a little bit more far in time. And finally, the impact that should have been measured as a degree of change. That's why it is called then the theory of change, because impact, so your long-term perspectives, implies how your actions are able over time to change your organization. That is the result. So we developed this logic framework that now it's, then we will systematize it during our talk, which is like pretty dense. And from where we received then a lot of information. In fact, to sum up all the information that you saw in our logic framework, which was indeed pretty messy, we can say that the setup of responsible governance in the research organization needs that scientific matters are informed by RRI. So this means that you cannot just consider RRI as an isolated item that really uh, doesn't enter into relationship with all the scientific matters, but it should be like inserted in scientific matters. So among the issues that came out are, for example, issues connected to research integrity, gender balance, open science, and open access. Another important assumption that emerged from the analysis of the logic framework is that responsible governance should be, by definition, open to society and to external stakeholders in order to receive feedbacks and contributions. One of our like, final aim is to like, build our scientific agenda in an open way. And another important issue is that responsible governance needs the establishment of common language, platforms, and procedures. This means that, and it was like pretty evident also in these uh, workshops that we had together, where we were more or less people informed about the topic we were talking about. We used to use different languages and also different ways. So somehow we should develop like common paths of work. That's one an important obstacle in order to foster and to develop science and society relation. So a common language, just to make you an example, hard scientists and soft scientists, if we can use this division, really didn't speak during our workshop the same language. <coughs> and another important thing achieved by the workshop is to understand that one of the main outputs of responsible governance should be real institutional change. So not just having, a, I would say, a, a set of rules that really doesn't imply any cultural shift, but real institutional change with the bridging of profit and non-profit research and innovation actions. Because at least in Italy at the moment, it, it, it seems very different working for profit and non-profit actions while putting them together in continuity towards uh, the responsibility was something that the participants to the workshops uh, considered very important. And finally, according to the first outcomes of the workshop, what emerged is that we should base responsible governance on a shared set of values reflected in simple guidelines with proper indicators aimed at stressing the social value of response of research and innovation. That means that one of our like, achievements that will go beyond the life of the project is to keep working on this governance dimension, uh, trying to, uh, to implement sort of shared guidance for what responsibility is. Then we move to a second phase concerning our like, governance perspective, which, was, uh, which took place in April, last April, so 2019. And the idea was to formalize uh, the concrete implementation of a responsible governance. In this case, we should uh, we choose another like tool for working together because the participants were the same involved in the in the previous workshop, which was like a balanced scorecard. In order, we we find we thought to assess for dimension, each of them guided by a specific objective, in order to understand how to implement responsibility. And the four dimensions were financial, user perspective, so our users perceive 
and give value to what we do, internal processes, so how we can change from internally our organization in terms of like deployment of activities, for example, and then growth and innovation, meaning what we could do uh, in terms of new processes, new action, or a new implementation of already existing action to foster responsibility. That's how our balanced scorecard looks like. So just to go on the objectives, because then we will have the table of indicators, and as you will have, these slides will be made available for you. You can go more specifically through the, the single indicators. We will just see some example. But here it's important to see how we started from a general objective and we declined it into specific objectives according to the four dimensions that we are looking to assess. So from the objective of implementing an ROI-based research center, we had the idea of investing of responsible and sustainable actions in order to look at the financial dimension of our action. In terms of users' engagement, the objective is to engage users and, and ensure their satisfaction. So also by developing, for example, survey on the action that we are implementing. As far as it concerns the internal processes, uh, we look at, uh, uh, our objective was to foster the uptake of a responsible governance. And as far as it concerns growth and innovation, the specific objective was related to develop new initiatives for responsibility and sustainability. And in Sapienza, we are definitely working at that. Just to make you some example, we launched a call, an internal call for funding public engagement actions from one side. And, and on the other hand, we are developing our like, um, uh, dashboard of indicators to assess all this dimension. It has become a sort of strategic objective of the university. So more or less, we are trying to transform what we did in the co-creation experiment into our real processes. And here you have the tables, just uh, an example tables. For example, concerning the financial objectives in terms of investment, for example, we had a percentage of expenditure for awareness campaign and events related to responsible governance, and we fixed a target and some actions. And more or less, we, do this, we did the same with all these objectives, defining proper indicators, related targets, and linked actions in order to deploy how we should act in order to foster responsible governance. That's the financial perspective. Then we have the user's perspectives, for example, an idea was to like, implement a loyalty card and giving some incentives in order to develop an engagement strategy customized to different stakeholders. And again, we have, in terms of internal perspective, the idea of uh, uh, to assess the degree of engagement of quadruple helix stakeholders, fixing, fixing it at at least 20%. So having not only in our like, activities internal uh, stakeholders or generally speaking people from academia but also trying to 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 favor and to foster the collaboration with all the actors of quadruple, quadruple helix and as far as it concerns uh, growth and innovation perspective the idea is to for example organize bottom-up initiatives so to, to have for example a call to sustain bottom-up initiative launched uh, trying to add them as a target at least three per year. And another important thing that I want to underline is that when we try to develop this balanced scorecard, we try to keep together the two, I would say parallel dimension because they are even, even more and more integrated nowadays of responsibility and sustainability, looking at sustainability in an open dimension, in an open perspective. So not only in terms of environmental sustainability, but also looking at the dimension of uh, social sustainability and economic sustainability. So we are tried, we really didn't succeed to define by the end of 2019, the end of the year was pretty a mess, but our, I keep this just to keep in mind that we have to do that, uh, a set of guidelines for superior co-responsible governance. So we will do that in the, at the beginning of this year for sure. But now let's move to the education and engagement perspective. We worked on that mainly in May 2019, organizing like hands-on activities. So first of all, we had these uh, hands-on workshops for kids and families that targeted two main actions. The first one was to prepare bioplastics with daily ingredients. For example, the kids used coconut flowers, organic waste, and so on. 
And on the other hand, they had the chance to work on 3D printing with organic materials of super videos. In this way, we uh, like give the children and their family the chance to to have a first like approach to both sustainability, but also to science and science education in, uh, in a very like easy, uh, easy going way. Also because our ideas were that engaging researchers from the other side in activity of science education and public engage engagement, it is a responsible action itself. And somehow, so this was our ideal link with these two different perspectives that we took into consideration in our experiment. And here you have some picture of how we promoted these activities because we did it in May and that's important because it still uh, um, testify an important uh, like uh, engagement internal activities because we did it in May because in May we have some extraordinary opening during the weekends of our university museum that are coordinated all together by a museum hub, centralized museum hub. And we took this occasion to create actions together with our museums and to start collaboration with them. And here are some pictures. For example, here you can see the bioplastics that resulted from the first workshops. Kids trying to make bioplastics. You can see the veggie on the tables, for example. And here we have the superheroes. So these superheroes made in organic materials and they are, they're, they are working on that, experiencing how to build things. It was really hands-on. I was there and it was, extremely fun. Let's move quickly, apart from the description of the experiment, to talk about like uh, how we approached the quadruple helix. Uh, for sure, the cooperation was favored um, according, uh, from all the quadruple helix act actors by the experiments venue, because Saperienko was funded to be interdisciplinary and multi-actors, uh, and it is by definition devoted to co-creation and cross-fertilization among different actors and different competencies. For sure, we can uh, underline a common difficulty that, first of all, resides in academia, because uh, in reality, the university system, and some people notice that and tell, told this to us, is still reluctant somehow to cross-fertilization. Also because we really don't have, at least in Italy, a proper national strategy or an incentive structure to favor working on different um, disciplines and especially with different actors. So there's still something that we have to do internally from one side and on the other side externally by pushing, being one of the biggest universities, uh, pushing somehow the change, the uh, uh, national change, a real change. As far as it concerns institutional change, first of all, we can say that responsible, responsible research and innovation and open science are in the Italian system defined third mission. So we used to say that the first mission is didactics, the second mission is research, and the third mission of universities, and generally speaking to research organization is like creating linking with the territory and cooperating for the social and cultural growth as well as the economical ones of the society. And I'm sure that our cooperation experiment, as I was also saying to you in the beginning, giving you some example of what we already did, uh, laid the groundwork for some degrees of institutional change. So I, I, I do believe that something moved and something changed. Also because we worked by informing the university governing bodies uh, and they were like, pretty happy about what was happening. Still a little bit, I would say, far away from, from like taking part to the actions, but they were informed, they liked it. And so probably there will be some other steps as the one I told you, like internal calls or like sensitive awareness actions and so on. And also the fact that we were able to involve uh, researchers, especially coming from hard science, our like main, pilot case was managed by the Department of Industrial Engineering. So someone, some, some people that are pretty, pretty far, ideally at least, from the concepts of responsibility and so on, because they really work on very, very like strict things, very focused on their scientific matter rather than on the impact of their work. So, which is, which should be in the end, our real outcome concerning also institutional change make researchers aware that responsibility and openness, far from being another administrative issue to comply with, 
represent an added value in the research work. That's the very, very aim of our activity, not only of my experiments, of Sapiens experiment, but of the entire, I could say, fit for our RI uh, project. The idea that responsibility and openness are not just something that you have to do because they are beautiful, but we, we are trying to show since the first work package that ended up making a critical analysis of what was happening in the science institutions, could be that RRI and OS could be useful in, their, in the daily work of researchers and as a reflection in the reorganization of research organization. Policy support requirement. As I already said to you, we, we, uh, our final step will be to define a simple set of guidelines for responsible governance in Sapirin Go with the aim of scaling them up. <coughs> if we can have this scale up, before to have this scale up, we need that these guidelines will be approved by our governing boards. We usually have an academic senate and a board of administration because this will represent a real political support towards our RI and OS. We are not in this space, but we are working to achieve that. By the way, as we already said, some policies to further this process have already been launched. A working group with researchers and administrative staff could to cope with definitions and indicators concerning their mission. And this is an activity that already had an important first uh, success because we approved and also the directors and our general director approved a first set of indicators concerning, among the other dimension, public engagement and public engagement and sustainability and responsibility. And we also launched an internal call for funding that was over just last Monday. So now we are analyzing the results for implementing science and society relations. So we will see how it comes, but for sure, giving some incentives for like creating a science and society engagement will favor the spread of, the spread of, uh, of these activities. Which are our next goals? Finalizing the guidelines. Of course, keeping working on the stakeholders involved in the design phase and looking since now at a, at a possible scale up. Implement within Sapirin Co new science education activities on a regular basis. So not waiting every May to do that, but trying to, de to do that with more regularity and not only with like kids, and families, so with, or generally speaking, with civil society, but also trying to engage the quadruple lake actors. So just to make you an example, to organize like policymakers workshops or industry workshops. And we're trying also to connect, and somehow we are trying, we are like succeeding in doing that, the experiment with other ongoing initiatives. One among the others, CIVIS, which is a, a project in which Sapienza uh, works actively, which is funded under the Erasmus Call for European Universities and that looks at implementing civic university. So we have one of the activities that I'm looking after for the university, which aims at implementing open labs. And these open labs for sure represent an interesting like, way of giving a follow-up to our cooperation experiment. For me, that's all. Uh, thank you very much, Andrea, for this very interesting presentation. It was very, very comprehensive and definitely uh, substantiates all the efforts that were undertaken in this project for the past three years and it's very important for everyone to see in details you know all the great work that you have been doing and that of course the entire consortium has contributed to.